Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Karak with Mehreen show. I'm very excited about today's guest. He's someone who does it all for his country. He's a guide who educates tourists about the beautiful culture of the UAE. He creates content to spread knowledge and interesting facts about his country. He's a presenter, a host, someone who spreads smiles and positivity. But above all, he says it himself, he's a good human being. Let me please welcome Mohammed Al Jasmi. Thank you. Thank you so much for the intro. And I hope I'm a good human being. I hope. <laughs> What do you mean by that? Because I saw it in, in one of your descriptions and you said a good human being. Like, wh what would you define a, a good human being? Um, a good human being, I think, who sees good in life. That's mm -hmm. the thing. I think uh, when you are good inside, you can good, uh, see good things on people. You can see life uh, differently, you know? Um, you can see uh, everything, the positive things behind what happens in your life, for example. And that makes you a good human being, I think. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and very simple. I always start by asking you like, to mm. introduce yourself without mentioning your career and what you do professionally, mm. because I've already given that description. Even though you've kind of introduced yourself as a good human being, so do you want to expand on who are you as Muhammad Al Jasmi besides everything that you do in your career, just mm. you as a person? As a person, interesting. I always define myself, I would say, with three things. Okay. Uh, and this is, it took me time to understand, I would say, with a lot of experience in life, a lot of things that I did. I will not say I'm too old, <laughs> 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 but I, I've been through experiences, different things. I like to experience new things. So uh, I always express myself into three things, I would okay. say. I'm a person that really loves uh, the word Ihsan in Arabic, which is uh, doing good. good. You know, uh, I love, you know, doing good. I love uh, participating in charity initiatives, volunteering and all of that. Uh, I feel a lot like alive when I'm, do, uh, when I'm doing those kind of things. So this is one thing. Uh, second thing is uh, I love culture. And whatever comes Beautiful. under culture. So, for example, history, you know, the traditions. I love getting to know new culture. And I think, you know, uh, being also part of my job is also to tell people about my culture. So that made me also get in depth more into yeah. UAE culture, the history of the UAE. Um, and I think, you know, one, this is one of the things uh, whenever you're traveling, Uh, if you just go, you know, for sh I hate when people travel just to go for shopping or those kind of things. You know? <laughs> That's um, not traveling then. Exactly. So getting to know those new cultures. Uh, there's a whole kind of travel that I did and, and to understand a very new culture in Nepal. So culture is also something. And the third thing I would, share, I would say is uh, experiencing new things in life. I love experiencing new things. Uh, like whatever comes to my, like whatever opportunity that comes to me, I will always like to say, oh, okay, let me try it. You know, let me see if I'm good at it or not. Let me see. Let me try it. You know, uh, it's always there is that, you know, adrenaline that comes to you. Oh, yeah. I want to try this, you know. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of the times, you know, sometimes you get in love with this thing. Uh, yeah. you, you never be, know what, what you find on your path. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, three things. Uh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's things, really. Yeah. And I can really tell uh, like everything that you described, you can really see that from you, like from your page, from when you meet you. Uh, we were just talking about how you love talking to people and listening to people's stories. So yeah. you can tell that you're someone who's really curious about mm. learning different cultures, different stories. So that's that's really cool because that's what brings in the open mindedness of a, of tolerance, of accepting, because how can we live in a world, especially in the UAE, where it's it's a melting pot of like 200 plus nas nationalities that exactly. live here. How can you live in such a place like this if you're not? open-minded so that's a really important trait to have exactly and exactly. and and you were talking about culture and you love ua culture and your and your what you do now kind of led you to understand more about the uae yes. what is something that you love the most like what's your favorite thing about the uae if you could think of favorite thing about uae Mm, interesting. It's probably hard to pinpoint one. Thing, like, what do you mean? Like, uh, make like it more about specific. About the culture, for example. Like, there's, of course, there are different uh, parts of the culture that you've adopted mm. as in your personality as traits. So, what is something about the culture that you just love when you think of you? I would say uh, this is something just came to my mind, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically, I think, how people in the UAE are very hospitable, uh, very welcoming. 
And uh, I kind of um, appreciated that more whenever I traveled abroad. Uh, I felt that, oh, not everyone's like that. You know, <laughs> you're used to that here, that going to search, uh, asking someone something or getting wants to help from someone or that we are very welcoming culture. We're very hospitable. Like, oh, welcome as a guest. You know, the guest is very important in yes. the house. If there's any guest coming to your house, you know how we would welcome them, uh, how you want them to feel comfortable, uh, you know, and all of that. I think this is very something beautiful that we have in our culture. And I think with a lot of also cultures, that you know welcoming those uh, being hospitable and that so i think this is one of the uh kind of my, one of my favorite i would say kind for of sure features, i yeah. would agree that this is something that really stands out in the uae when i came i mean i, I was born and raised here but when my friends uh, came here from different countries to university and uh when they would come to we study at zaid university and a lot of the people they would bring karak or gawa or dates on a random day, it's not even a, on a, an occasion. They just bring on a random day just to like yeah. introduce you or to welcome you or to d- give you a taste of dates. You know, like I just find that exactly. so beautiful. So um, for sure, the hospitability. I remember here. the story. Uh, it's not uh, he's a Saudi person, uh-huh. and you know, Gulf countries are very similar to each yes. other. And he said a story that he was uh, traveling in one of the countries. I forgot where exactly. And, you know, there was people uh, going hitchhiking. So, you know, when you have like this boy thing. Uh, and he was with his friends. He's like, oh, let us to- take this, those people. So this so, was here or in no, Saudi? No, uh, okay. no, not in Saudi. There are Saudi, uh, two Saudi men uh-huh. uh, traveling, traveling somewhere. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Uh, and they took those people with them. And they remember that they wanted to get like some lunch and that in the road. That was like three hours away. So and they told them that, oh, do you want something? They said, oh, no, no. You know, they were like suspicious, suspicious like why are they getting us something and this. And then when they stopped also, they were insisting that like, you have to get something. You know, we're buying that. We cannot eat. If you didn't eat, we'll not eat. And this is something very normal here. You know, yes, we do that all the time. For sure. But for them, we're like, why they're like that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they, they find it so strange. Exactly. They're like, what are they trying to do? And they were asking, like, do you want, like, they later on, like, do you want something from us like this? Like, no, <laughs> you know, uh, and this is part of the culture, you know, in yeah. the Gulf generally, in our yeah. culture and that. It is something that if there's a guest or there's someone with me, I cannot just go and eat in front of him, you know? Yes, and for sure. And him just watching me, you know? Uh, so this is something very beautiful, to be honest. For and sure. I think traveling really makes you appreciate more your for culture. For sure, yeah. yeah. Even for me, it's similar that when I started traveling, I realized that, I started being more grateful for the things here that I just never, I took for granted. I never realized, like even when I went abroad and I would, similar situation, like I would order food and I just cannot eat if there's other people next to me who don't have food. And I'm like, how can I eat? Like I'm, every time my food would arrive and they're not hungry, but I would like force to give food to them. Like I cannot eat unless you guys eat. So this is something that was instilled in me because I grew up here. My parents are like exactly, that. Exactly. So yeah, that's and for it, sure. Exa- this is something beautiful, you know, uh, that it's not, I'm not saying also locals are like that or Emiratis are like that. This is something that happened just yesterday, which I really loved. I wanted to remember, imagine, I wanted to remember the story today in my head. I was like, there is something happened yesterday. Yeah, I forgot. I it was a nice thing. <laughs> you know, I wanted to say that in, the, my, in my story, you know. <laughs> but I forgot what was it. You just now, remembered perfect. I just remembered it. Because I was uh, in Emirates Towers. I usually go there. We do have some shooting there, videos and this. And I was going down by the elevator. You know, the escalator, sorry. Mm-hmm. And there was a, like, I think he was a British guy, American. I'm not sure. I think he was British. Okay, I was like this here, and uh, I was in, in his right side, and he was in my left side. When he came, I said, welcome, Manny, go inside. He said, no, 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 you mean, you mean. It's like, we usually do that, you know, like uh, the, the right person will go first. Yes. You know, and I was like, how oh, this guy knows that? <laughs> you know, and he talked to the he said, you mean, you mean. And he said it in Arabic. He said it in Arabic and wow. British accent Arabic way. <laughs> I let you scratch. I was like, wow, uh, you know. That probably felt so exactly. like heartwarming. Exactly, that was amazing. Like, I was like happy for the next five, five, five minutes thinking <laughs> about. that inst- oh, Exactly. That's beautiful. And it's beautiful how this small thing that we usually, we always do that. Uh, it kind of went into his, you know, he comes from a very different culture, from very different, far country. But and he, he adopted it. It's amazing. Yeah, That's yeah, beautiful, yeah. actually, yeah. yeah.
Wow. Thank you for making me remember that. <laughs> awesome. I love we'll that story. We'll cut this and take it <laughs> <laughs> I love that story. Yeah. But uh, adding on to that, um, in your in your job, you obviously introduce foreigners, people maybe living in the UA as well, about uh, the different cultures of UA, the different aspects of, of, of UA. Yes. What is something that the tourists usually find very interesting they find very fascinating or different to what they've heard before is there something that stands out i'll say one of the main things which is a very simple thing also uh, is our clothes what we are wearing you know because i think uh, i always tell them i would always tell the guests that um, we are lucky that we are one of the few countries that we still wear, wear our traditional this. clothes. It's not something that I would wear to show you, oh, this is was, you know, wearing by our grandparents. No, you know, we do wear that today. We do wear it whenever we go in a delegation to another country or something like that. So for them, it's really interesting, you know, what you're wearing and True. why you're wearing that still, you know. And uh, we do explain everything. Like, for example, what I'm wearing here, what's the difference between what I'm wearing and the formal look, you know. With the black. Uh, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. With the uh, god. The- a god, a god. Okay. yes. Yeah. So this is, we call it, for example, this is Asama. Uh, oh, Asama. Yeah. Asama okay. or Hamdaniya. Okay. Some people do call it Hamdaniya. And this is more, I always tell them, joke about it, this is like the t-shirt and jeans. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Makes it's more sense. casual when you, you go to a coffee shop, friend's house, something like that. You would wear uh, Asama or Hamdaniya. Whenever I'm going to a formal now occasion, let's say a formal meeting, I would wear, you know, something which is the Ghatra and I got. And yeah. that one uh, is like more like a suit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Makes oh, yeah. it. Oh, you make those analogies. That's, exactly, that's clever. Exactly. Yeah. And what we do, what I like about it, that we don't explain. It's not a presentation. When you come to us like, oh, this and this and this. No, it's not. It's like very that. interactive. Yeah, probably. interactive. It's a conversation. Q&A session. We talk. We talk more about. We tell stories about our parents. Everything. You know. Yeah, that's, that's nice. beautiful. That's. I cool. would recommend you to come. I, I've come. been actually to You've the been there. open. I went with my university last year, oh. but I don't think you were there because I don't. I would have remembered if I saw you. It was. Yeah, it was another one. It was someone else that that. Mm. But I've been there. The open minds open. Exactly. Uh, open doors. Yeah. Open minds. We yeah, went yeah. there. Yeah. You but have to it was come really Ramadan. Cool. Ramadan is oh, very really? beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've never been there. We do there. And oh, beautiful. that would be fun. Yeah, for yeah, sure, yeah. I'll be there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's so cool. So. Getting into cultures and learning about the history of UAE, how did that passion come about? Of course, this could be instilled in you because that's what you see around you, your family. But uh, going out of your way to learn more and more about the culture and history, that comes from passion. So where did Mm. that um, come from? That, I would say, um, it started uh, in high school. Okay. I would say before that uh, it was normal. I wasn't that interested. I would say. Yeah. Uh, being in Al Ain, I'm from Al Ain, so. Oh, I was being... born and raised in Al Ain. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm from Al Ain. So uh, living in Al Ain, I think Al Ain is a very traditional city. It's, uh, it's very calm, and you know I love Al Ain Oasis, for example. I love going there in the morning, especially. Uh, so uh, that's kind of you know makes you generally more like more cultural, more traditional. Uh, but I would say one of the things that made me more interested, I started volunteering in high school a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the things I did, I was a tour guide in one of the places called Al Qatara uh-huh. in Al Ain. It's like yeah. a kind of the historical culture area. culture center, I think. Uh, yeah, they have the, some cultural center yes, things it, there. So I was volunteering okay. there. It was uh, like a month where they had like uh, for the traditional crafts, something like that. Uh, it's uh, like a festival that happens every yeah. winter uh, on September, I think. Uh, and they always bring kids from schools and that. And they wanted, you know, people to do some guiding and that. So I did that and I cool. loved it. <laughs> cool. You know, doing this, talking to people about the culture, about cool. whatever is that and this. And I would say one of the pr- one of the people who made me do that a lot, I got introduced to him while volunteering. He's one of my closest friends now. And he was also a tour guide, but he worked there. Uh, and he really made me know more about the culture. He kind of he kind of introduced me to life generally. You know, in high school, you're always like your views like that. Yeah, you know, for sure. And I would say this person made me like view the world like this. Like he showed wow. me more in depth. Like one of the things I never like. I don't go to Abu Dhabi usually. Uh-huh. I do have family in Dubai and Abu and uh, Ajman Sharjah, but I don't. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm I think the mic. No. <laughs> okay. <It's fine>. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, but I don't have anyone in Abu Dhabi, for example. So he kind of took us to Abu Dhabi. He showed us like the art, the culture, and all of this. 
and this has made me know more. Like, like, what is this things? What is this world that I didn't know nothing wow. about? So uh, I think uh, he has the kind of uh, what he says. How is it in English? What the thing is, he made me he played understand. the role, yeah, in, big yeah. role in my life, letting me know, understand all of that. Outside. Very yeah. cool. That's interesting because I mean, we were talking about education system before, but the reason that you found that passion was because of a person, not necessarily because of your school or yeah, because yeah. Of what you learn in school. Not, really, not in school at all. Yeah, like <laughs> that's like sad, but also cool yeah. because that shows that you can learn a lot more from people than perhaps what you learn in school that's and why yes i was saying to you you know uh, earlier on that you know you don't have to make your life only school or university you have to do another thing you know this makes you like for for me for example i'm totally the opposite person when i was in school Okay. Whenever anyone and it, like I remember a teacher saw me that day. I went to you know after a couple of years you go to school say hi to the teachers. I did that, <laughs> and he told me that's a different person that I'm seeing now. You know he 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 follows me on Instagram. Oh, he sees yeah, what I'm doing. Okay. It's like it's different. You know in school <laughs> I was I wasn't say shy kid, but I wasn't like you know the talkative person. I didn't do public speaking at all. You know, this thing in the morning that you do in school, I hated that. I don't do oh, that. Oh, wow. And I don't know what happened in high school, I would say. And after high school and university, this is the time when I started volunteering, you know, a lot. And it made me know myself more. It made me understand that, oh, I have this person inside me that is, you know, that very talkative, energetic and that. And uh, that wasn't me at all in, in uh, school. school. Yeah. It wow. It was like two different worlds. Wow. Yeah. But I think it was there. Inside it, me, but, but it wasn't I f- out. It could also be that the environment didn't I don't, make you feel comfortable to open that up. Basically, maybe. Could yeah. be. So do you think that um, this energy and this excitement to meet people came after university? Uh, so after- I would say, you know, uh, it was in high school. But the when last you were year volunteering. School, exactly. When okay. I started volunteering. I started volunteering at the... Uh, it was before, after the final exams of grade 11. Uh-huh. Uh, starting grade 12, this was the time when it was my first year in volunteering at this. So, But but then that wasn't showcased in school, right? Uh, not really, not much, because it was just the it last year. A, and it was, yeah. you know, the last year in school, it's always oh, hectic yeah, and you have yeah. to study. And it's like, your, you know, your life depends on that. And I was like, <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> for sure yeah that's something like people don't realize until afterwards like exactly. even me actually in school i i'm very like focused on my grades and we were talking about it and when you were talking when you were talking about people who are so focused on their grades that was like the definition of me in high school exactly. and it's sad but that's just the way I was and I didn't really know until I went into college and I realized there's this whole other world that I should explore and exactly, I have other passions. Exactly. So and it's sad, sure. you know, that, you know, always and I would say, of course, you know, because people saw before that, you know, studying, you have to get your grades and this. But I think soft skills is very important, uh, especially in our world today where there's no there's a lot of opportunities but it's also for people that you know how to know how to speak for people that know how to do certain things exactly it's not just all about education is important school is important university is important but also it's very important also to do other things than that yeah so did you go to university yes and what did you study two things okay (laughs) uh yeah i started my university as a chemical engineer okay yeah i did i'm an a student i was smart oh for sure i'm still smart i'm not surprised yeah Yeah, i was an a student and this new when graduates from high school will be like okay what should i study you don't know what to do in life you know for sure especially when you graduate from high school i think that's what i'm thinking today that you have to wait it's not always i don't know we made like something in life that you have to finish high school, you have to go to university directly. And this is, I think, in my opinion, is wrong. You have to, I think, if you know what's your major, what you want to do, yes, do that. But I think wait, you know, you have to wait up until you get to know what you want to do, then go to university. And this is my opinion now. So for me, I went to chemical engineering for two years. Then I was like, uh, what am I doing in my life? <laughs> you know, because I was seeing, you know, what, because I was studying hard at the same time. I couldn't, because I was volunteering also at the same time. So I was like between this and this. And usually I would uh, make volunteering up of education, <laughs> to be sense. honest. Yeah. Uh, that showcases uh, your like passions. That was, yeah. clear. it was a clear signal of exactly. what path you so should take. After that, I was like, Okay, I know I have two years to finish, or um, mostly three years, uh, but 
would I be an engineer after that? No. You know, I know that I will not work in that field. You know, I'm, I know because, you know, in those two years after volunteering, I knew myself more. I know that I don't like this. I like this. I can't be like this. I don't. And I know if I went to engineering, if I worked in a factory, for example, I wouldn't be a good one. You know, I'd be the one that want to finish work and go home. Yeah, I know. Makes I, sense. For me, I don't want to be like that. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> you know, I want to do something that I really yep. like that it impacts others. That and you know, when you do something that you like, generally you would love to be better and better every for time. For sure, and you constantly improve yourself. Naturally. Exactly. Yeah. So after two years, I was like, ah, uh, let me change. And to be honest, something also other happened that made me like, okay, that's the reason. <laughs> that made me like, okay, leave now. Uh-huh. So then I uh, started studying something else in Dubai. So I changed my university from Al Ain. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was studying in Abu Dhabi University. Then I changed it to Dubai. I studied in Hamdan Mohammed, Smart mm-hmm. University. Uh, I study healthcare administration. Oh, interesting. That's yeah. the le- the last thing I thought of. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know. I thought it was media or something along and those it's, lines. It's funny how I uh, kind of uh, choose uh, that major because whenever I started, I was like, okay, what majors do you have? You know, and mostly Hamdan University is more focusing, you know, on business uh-huh. kind of on uh, entrepreneurship like okay. that. Uh, that like that's the base. Uh, so they had like quality. They had like accounting. I was like, ah, it's boring. And this. There's like healthcare administration and this. I was like, yeah, this seems interesting, you know? And I asked them in the beginning, like, what is like your bestseller major? What do people oh, bestseller <laughs> major? <laughs> I was like taking a burger. Or <laughs> <laughs> you know, doing a pizza. You were like know? ordering a burger. <laughs> and that's like a plan in life, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I like so, that perspective. But yeah, yeah I took uh, because I, I took health care administration because it was interesting. Mm-hmm. I didn't know anyone who studied that. Yeah. Uh, so heard. that made me like, oh, it would be a unique thing, you know? So I was like, yeah, why not? So <laughs> did you like it? It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say I liked it, <laughs> uh, but it's good. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, but this again showcases the fact that the degree is not as important as exploring your soft skills exactly. and going outside of university. Yeah, so that- and you know, nowadays I would say maybe before it was more important, but nowadays I think the world is different. Uh, you can make more money than an engineer or a doctor from you know something that you love to do. Uh, I think there's a lot of things that are coming also in the future. We are going a very fast way, which is, I'm scared of it a little bit. Yes, uh, it but, is scary. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, there's a lot of new things coming up. Like if you told me before 10 years that I would get some money from content creators, like what? You know, so this is a new thing that wasn't there at all 10 sure. years ago. So uh, uh, I think nowadays it's more, it's easier, I think, to not just like go into the same path as everyone does in the world yeah, so, yeah. it's better to adapt than mm-hmm. to live in the past exactly. and for sh- and like in this world of ai and as ai is advancing mm-hmm. our human intellect is actually more important than ever because those people who have the skills that ai does not have and those are usually soft skills mm-hmm. that's like it, it's it's a game changer exactly. so for sure that i don't like ai I like oh, Tadibati. I, I, I like ask you about because it feels like you were dodging the AI, like you were talking about the world advancing, but you didn't mention AI. Yeah. So what do you think? What do you think about? It's a good thing, of course, for mm-hmm. the world. Uh, we have to adapt to it. Mm-hmm. Generally, I'm a person that really loves, like one of the examples, like in university, I loved when I was there between the students and all that. Now, now I'm not mentioning AI, generally like the online education. Mm -hmm. It's very good. It's very helpful, especially that I was working and studying at the same time. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I hated it. I hated it. You, know? you mean online setting online? online setting now generally okay. like setting with the technology then going to ai and all that like i don't know what's gonna happen I, uh, generally i don't like technology a lot but <laughs> but, but, you, but like your life is like on social media yeah but i guess technology but as in as generally okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay i like that's, i, guess I like that's people like seeing people like you know i see for example now this new thing of going into you know this thing and the you VR attend world, a, yeah. a con oh yeah uh, some, <laughs> I don't want to see people, you know, in front of me. It's not like that. And AI, of course, is something like now new and happening and it's really developed really fast. So it is scary, to be honest. For sure. Yeah. It's definitely scary. It's like we are all like social human beings. We we cannot get rid of that face-to-face yeah. connection. There's nothing that could replace exactly. it. Exactly. But I love ChatGPT. I think it's yeah. really good. Yeah, I think everyone <laughs> loves it. Uh, I will not say for what, but <laughs> what I like. 
for sure like i think ai is just a tool that's supposed to help us and yeah. facilitate us it just depends on the way people you use, use it, it. Exactly. like that's like social media as well like mm. you can use it in a negative harmful way or you can use it positively exactly, exactly. so True. It, that that definitely uh, makes True. sense uh, coming back to the topic of culture because yeah. that's definitely something that i'm interested in yeah. um I wanted to understand more about how culture influences happiness. So mm. there's a lot of research um, that uh, studies on how different types of cultures affects happiness in different ways. So, for example, there are cultures that are more individualistic. So they mm. focus on like uh, personal freedom and yourself and like the Western culture is usually yes. like that. So their happiness is derived from them being independent, for example. Yeah. But then they're collectivist cultures that focuses on like family and making your people happy making like your tribes happy which comes from which comes from our past actually this mm. is derived from our past um so what do you th i mean of course ua culture is very col collectivist um what do you think about this specific culture and how do you think that's affected your definition of happiness um, I love I love how UAE is. I would say this is one of the things also that you know my work with especially with dealing with a lot of people, different cultures every day, uh, seeing how they are, how do they do things in life, how their culture is very different than our culture. Yeah. And uh, I really love I really appreciated our culture a lot. Mm -hmm. How you know we are always together, we always meet, and you know in Eid, Ramadan, uh, kind of weekends we meet like in our grandmother house like this. You know I, I really <laughs> love that. I yeah. really love how, you know, how we are connected to each other. Um, unfortunately, also, it's not like how it was also. Like, I do listen to my mom um, when I was younger also. Uh, my grandmother, like, at that time, it was much, much more closer to each other. Uh, in terms of they lived in the same neighborhood, you know, they would visit each other every time. It was time. more regular, yeah. Everyone support each other, you know. Those kind of stories really makes me want to go to that time, want to, um, you know, experience that, how it was, how people were very close to each other. Today, of course, because how life is now, you know, we have to work in this and this, it's far. Uh, so it's not as how it was. But I would think, of course, it was one of the main things that... Uh, that makes you happier, you know? And seeing also the other cultures, you know, and I won't say, like, I don't know, I don't agree that uh, their happiness comes from just freedom and that. I okay. think it really affects their mental health, you know? And I know, uh, I heard actually a story of one of the people that, one of the guests that came to us, and they told us that how, you know, they know, like, one of their uncles that lives alone, away his kids uh, are like working in other kind of states or something like this and he lives alone and i was like for us it won't happen like if, especially if you have like an older person who would live you know and this is one of the things you know when you live alone you, you just focus on oh when i reach this age i want to leave the house i want to work on myself okay what about your parents you know what about them and visiting them and being there with them so i think the that kind of western idea of you know just being you know independent and all of that uh, it really affects your mental health. And you can see that, you know, you can see that when you're always like, you have a lot of stress in yourself that, oh, I want to build myself, I want to do this, I want to do that. You don't have to, you know, <laughs> you, you, you have your life, you know, it's very nice to have your family surrounding you. It's nice to have a back, you know, that whatever happens, you know, I know today that if I lost my job, I lost everything. I go to my mother's house or my <laughs> parents' house and sit down there, there like that. Yeah. Exactly. Of course, there'll be someone there. Even though, let's say, uh, after many years, let's say my brother, for example, lost a job or I something happened to me, I would go to one of my siblings' house or live there. No one's going to tell me anything. So, you know, having that feeling it makes you, of course, much more happier. You know, it makes you more know that Secure. you have someone. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, generally just to... Uh, live uh, you know alone or you know uh, that kind of mentality of oh, I, w I reached that age now I have to leave the house I think that really affects you know your happiness generally and that's in the beginning when you're younger you're like oh I want to do this I want to do that I want to travel I do but maybe they're different I will not uh, of course I will not judge that maybe there are different cultures so it's different uh, but uh, for us I think it's very hard and yeah. I will tell you something that happened to me also in Nepal Mm -hmm. uh, I traveled to Nepal in January. It was one of my best experiences in life. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and I remember the last day I was sitting in a coffee shop with my friends. And after a couple of hours, we were going to the airport. 
and I saw a guy sitting there, and um, and he looked not Nepali, he looked more uh, like European, um, American. I didn't know, but he looked really interesting. You know, when you see a person, you know, and this you person know has a story. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. And for me, that's <laughs> like I have you to have talk this, to this guy. And you also have this instinct to, to just identify like a yeah, good story. You know, you see that's like man, this guy has a story. <laughs> Then, of course, I went to him. <laughs> I was like, wow. oh, hi, and this and this. Then this guy would show you his picture also later oh, on. Wow. You wouldn't know. I took <laughs> a selfie with him. proper yeah. conversation yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. And he was uh, he was American. Uh-huh. And uh, he lives in Nepal for four months. He lives in India for four months. And he goes to China for four months. Well, okay. He's a linguistic. He knows more than 80 languages. Uh, it's amazing, yeah. And he's a nice story. And his uh, wife is Japanese. <laughs> wow, like what a multicultural exactly. individual. And, he, and he, he's a Buddhist. He lived in Japan for a couple of years. Now he's doing this thing. He's a sign language teacher now. And it's it's interesting. It's and crazy. I was like saying, and his son uh, studies in California. I was like, wow. And I, I thought like for a second in my mind, like, can I do this? You know, can I be like just like alone in that age? He was around his 60s, 70s. Uh, be that age, just depend on myself. I don't see my family. You know, my wife is there. My son is there. For us, that's too hard. Maybe for them, you know, coming from that culture, it's different. Uh, but generally, I think deep inside it affects, you know, of you want to be surrounded yeah, by your family. Affecting. Like for us here, uh, I'm a very... I know, no, I'm a very people's person. I really love to be surrounded by people. If I'm alone, I'm dead, you know. <laughs> I cannot live alone. <laughs> yeah, I cannot live alone. And so for me, I was like, I would love to try it. As I told you before, I love new experiences, but to live that, I cannot, I don't think so. For us, like, oh, when Ramadan comes, I want to be with my family, you know. When, uh, when you know, Eid comes, I want to visit them, I want to talk to them. So it's different, it's different. Do you think that uh, in a specific period of your life, it's maybe important to have, to, I don't know, experience things alone or find yourself alone or be kind of not separate, of course, that doesn't mean like completely separating from your family, but just having that phase, maybe, I guess when you're younger, mm. um, people usually say when you're younger, it's the time for you to explore new things. So it's yeah. important to do things by yourself. Yes. So does it really depend on the phase of your life that you're in? That's for sure. Of course, uh, being in certain phases, it's maybe easier than other phases. Yeah, for of sure. Of course, 20s is the easiest. Uh, yeah. You want to explore, you want to do things and that. Personally, for me, I want to do it alone. Oh, right. <laughs> I want to okay. do it with someone. It makes sense. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as I said, I'm a very people's person. I love. I even I would tell you something. Something when I traveled, uh, usually a couple of times I traveled alone, but I have someone there. Like in the uh -huh. country, I do have a you friend there. You would meet someone there. Yeah, yeah. Or I do have a group that will meet in that country. But also in the airplane, you know, like five hours there, I watch a movie and I'm like, what should I do now? You know, I have to talk to someone. <laughs> I go to the cabin crew in the back. Oh, really? <laughs> I wow. talk to them. I You'll get to know. You always find someone to talk to. <laughs> yeah, I got to know their stories from where they come from. <laughs> what was the hardest thing that they faced? You know, all about that. So for me personally, yeah, it would be hard. But I would say generally, yes, for sure. Being in your 20s. Every person would tell me like 20s is the time that you experience, you fail, you experience, you fail and everything. And for me, you know, it's not just the 20s, I think. You know, uh, I hate when people just say, oh, I reached 40 years, خلاص, you know, what do I have in life? I don't want to think about, let's say, a new project to do or a new business. Yes, of course, you're less eligible to do that. But I think I, I, I know a person, he's around his, in his 40s. He doesn't look like that. His energy, his productivity, it's like early 20s, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's like, it's amazing how this guy went through a lot of things. You know, this guy, What I want to sit with him also, but he's too busy. Uh, <laughs> you know, he kind of, and he told me a little bit, like glimpse just about his story that he did, he did. Imagine you are like, in your life, you went through this, then you took this job opportunity, then you had this, and you went up until there, up until the top. Then you decided, I want to change I don't like that. I don't like being there. Okay, what about all that? I was like, he changed. He said, wow, I don't like that's this. a he lot of courage. He started a travel company. This is something that he loves, and he does another other things, other businesses, and and he changed everything. And he <laughs> works every day. I see him every day, like in, in the youth hub and uh, <laughs> the Mars Towers. <laughs> and he works there, and he said from the morning till evening. I said, man, he he is like in around. He doesn't look in his forties, but I think he's <laughs> around his forties, fifties even. And, wow. And it's like wow. 
Wow. And this is kind of, you know, it gives you an idea that, you know, we generally, yes, in our culture, unfortunately, this is something also that, you know, when people reach that age, oh, so I don't want to do anything or sit at home, you know, but you do see, this is something good also in the Western culture, I see, that you reach that 50s, 60s, you see people traveling alone, doing new experiences, things. For us, like, ah, oh, I reach 60s, I don't want to go at home. <laughs> yeah, when you stay and lay and on the bed. this is bad for health, it's bad for your mental health and everything. I don't say everyone, but generally... Our culture is like that, but I think uh, I want to change that. I, I do hope I do have a healthy body for that. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I think you're on the right path, hopefully. I, hope, I don't hopefully. know your healthy like routine, but I'm sure Bad. it is. <laughs> but, but coming yeah. from the fact that you have this passion to explore new yeah. things, I hope it stays the same. Hope so. But I agree, like this is something that I also noticed that like when I would travel, I would see uh, like old grandmothers riding bikes on the streets and I, and I would find that really surprising. Um, because that's definitely not at all like f at least in my family as well you see of course it's important to take care of your grandmother i'm not at all saying that they should be riding bikes but it's just that um the importance that they give to like health and trying new things even exactly. at such an older age in their in their life that's definitely different so exactly. I, I would agree i would hope to do that as well yeah. that's why you need to work out <laughs> For sure i'm telling myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> But so talking about culture, um, there's something called stereotypes that we mm. all hear, that we all have within ourselves as well. We have we have stereotypical views about the West, about certain countries, about yes. certain people, because that's just human nature. Um, so probably even in your experience, when you travel or when tourists come uh, into uh, in the cultural center, they they probably bring in some stereotypes about the Arab world, about the UAE. Yeah, so yeah. what kind of stereotypes have you er heard and how do you navigate through that? How do you mm -hmm. tackle them? One of the main things, of course, um, a lot of people think that uh, I do have a Lamborghini in the backyard and I have a Ferrari and like that. <laughs> and that's a <laughs> very common thing that people see that, oh, you know, you're you're from the Gulf, generally, you know, of course you are. You're rich. You're super rich. You know, it's not like yeah, the you know, land is made of gold. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you live in a castle or something like that. Uh, so uh, this is one of the biggest things. But I would say generally, I don't know from where that comes from. You know, I don't see like people. You know, generally sometimes look from the media. They look in social media. They see Dubai only with supercars and all that. And this is you know wrong to see that in that just particular way. And I always tell people, you know. Being rich and wealthy, there are some families, yes, who are rich, who are wealthy families, uh, big trading families since, since a long time, and they are wealthy families. Uh, but also, like, not everyone, of course, uh, but majority, this is a fact, yes, majority of Emiratis um, are, let's say, the medium kind of thing. You know, medium, they are not, we don't have, like, say, poor Emirati families that you cannot provide for your kids. Let's say you don't have a house to stay in. This this thing, you won't see it, yes. And, uh, you know, I do remember uh, a video of Sheikh Zayed, uh, uh, the founder of UAE. Uh, he said, I cannot imagine a local not having a house with his name. You know, not just living in a rented house. Not with having a house name. in his name, you know, and this is something that you see how they really worked hard, you know, that for everyone to get everything that they needed, uh, especially with, you know, education, healthcare, housing and everything. So there is a lot of support, of course, from the government and the welfare system and all of that. And that makes like I would say most locals, of course, have a good life. You do have a thing, you do have a car, you do have a house and all of that. Uh, but is everyone rich? No, I don't have a Lexus. Nice, one. I like my Lexus. <laughs> I don't have a Lamborghini. I don't like Lamborghini. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, but yeah, this yet. is a very big <laughs> yet. I don't like. No. I want a Jeep. I don't know. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, one another, for example, big stereotype that they think women, you know, have to wear black, men have to wear white. It's like no, it's not like that, you know. And some people think it's religious that you have to wear black or you have to wear white. No, this is purely cultural, you know, tradition. What we are wearing here. You go to Muslims in Egypt and Indonesia, they wear differently. You just have to wear mothers, and that's different, you know. So this is also one of the common things. What else? This is what I remember generally now. Yeah. 
how do you respond to negative stereotypes? So, for example, when you travel and people talk to you about it, like how do you how do you approach the situation? I laugh. I laugh. To be honest, yeah, because you know, you, you know, from where that comes from. You know, it's yeah. not about, uh, you know, it's not about they want to offend you or want to say that and. Uh, and it's nice that from from them that they said it. You know, they want to know. Yeah, is true. It right? They're, is they're it? curious. No, they're you know? actually instead of just putting it within themselves and staying with that mindset. At exactly. Least they talk to. Exactly. Yeah, and you know, true. we do get a lot of responses from the guests that we have that they really appreciate what happened. Like you know, the program itself, the center itself, right. what we did. You know, as, uh, answering their questions. And I remember, um, I remember one time. Uh, there's a guest that told told me that this center has to be everywhere in the world. Oh, you know, wow. imagine like, and it is important. You know, when you go to a country, you want to know what they're doing. You want to yes. talk with them freely. You know, it's not like a presentation or going to a museum. It's different. It's more about a cultural understanding, majlis set up. You know, going yeah, to someone's I love house it. I love and it sitting when I there. So it's very different vibes very we, like we do like to people to feel like in their house you know and just talking you know to a person to a local there yeah uh, and that's one of the nice thing I, I remember also another thing when speaking about the family and the culture that we have i, I remember the guest and what makes it more surprising that she didn't understand english very well she was i think mexican uh-huh. and she came with one of her family that they live here in dubai and i remember i was talking about sheikh zayed and what he did and all of this she started crying. I was like, wow. How a person, you know, got emotional to a sheikh that is, you know, let's say, if they told me about a Mexican, let's say, ruler that did this, I wouldn't be emotional, yeah. you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, okay, exactly. good for him, you know. Yeah. But, you know, being emotional, she wow. was very emotional about that what really- Sheikh Zayed did and all this. And, of course, she got translating from that. It was very amazing. For I got emotional when I saw her emotional, oh. you know. I was like... <laughs> Wow. wow, you know how how kind of preached to her and this is just that you know. means it really plays an instrumental role in impacting exactly. the tourists that come in and giving exactly. them an idea of the culture. Yeah, That's yeah. beautiful. But even sure. when I went, even though of course I was born and raised here, but when I went, I loved it so much. There were a mm-hmm. lot of things I didn't even know, and uh, the, as you said, it's like a it's like you're in a house. The whole yeah, vibe exactly. is just it's in it's the fun. You say come to the majlis, sit exactly. down, you know, talk with us and all of that. Yeah, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> just one last question before we yeah. end. Um, you were talking about how uh, your happiness uh, comes a lot from um, from the people around you. You're a very people's person, you a can lot. tell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but does that make it difficult for you to get like personal space or for you to um, for you to find your path? individual because you need to also have some alone moments mm. not moments when you're lonely but just alone to you know f- figure things out to um give yourself some space and time how how do you how do you do that <laughs> <laughs> this is actually one of my struggles in life uh, that as i said i i'm a very productive person when, when i'm with a team with people you know in an event or something Same. yeah uh, but whenever i'm alone um it's very hard for me to, you know, work, work, to do something and that. And this is something, to be honest, I'm trying to learn more. I'm trying to, because I, I do understand that you do have to have some time that you're like with yourself, uh, you know, thinking about what you're doing in life and yeah. fixing your goals and this. But it's too hard for me to do it, you know. I do like whenever I'm doing this, someone's talking to me and telling me, oh, yeah, I do see this, you know. So I'm trying. Uh, I do have those moments, yeah. Like for me, some people are like, you know, I want like two days not seeing anyone. For me, like half a day, all day. <laughs> my job, I, like, I don't want to see people half a day after two weeks of talking, you know. <laughs> so uh, and it's, it's kind of hard, but I do understand but that. But even half a day is a lot. Like it's a good thing to start with. Yeah, but I'm kind of depressed at the end, you know. <laughs> it's like, oh, this is someone, you know, I, I cannot. I have to talk with someone. Uh, so it, it is it is hard for me. I don't know. And to the point that it's sometimes bad, to be honest, you know, because you know, sometimes it happens that your friends are busy or something like that. And, you know, and you're free, let's say, and you want to meet someone, you want to do something, but you don't find. So and then you become sad. And be like, okay, what should I do now? Yeah. You know? yeah. I, I, I get really like, you know, and I cannot work. I, I cannot uh, like be productive. I cannot think. Uh, for me, if I was, let's say, with a team and working with that, especially the team that are same Yeah, you bounce ideas. It just exactly. comes to, I understand. Exactly. I'm yeah. much 10x like person. Makes when sense. When you see me at home, I'm just laying down and sleep. I cannot work at home. 
and this is one of my Meet. challenges during COVID. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I COVID was the worst for me. I was depressed in COVID. No, <laughs> <laughs> not that depressed, but <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I feel like home is like you create this separation between home, which is for rest, and then whatever workplace you have, which is for productivity. So exactly. when you go home and like during COVID, that separation was not there. It was mm-hmm. all blurred. So it was like, yeah, for yeah, me yeah. as well, I, I definitely understand. Exactly. Did you ever have like, dinner alone by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> I do see, I do sometimes because, you know, I don't live with my family. I live here in Dubai now. Oh, so you do have a, I do, a long time. Yeah, but like generally, uh, I don't sit in a restaurant alone at all. <laughs> I sit in my car, yes. I uh-huh. eat McDonald's, you know, in dinner and sit in my car, watch something. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, just like sitting down in a restaurant, I would not do that. <laughs> I feel so lonely if I'm sitting in a restaurant. Like, for example, I know a ramen restaurant now, a new ramen restaurant. I uh-huh. want to go there so bad. But, but I don't want to go alone. Someone to go exactly. <laughs> I was like, oh, I want to go. You, go? <laughs> you know, I cannot sit in a restaurant alone. You know, I won't do that. I feel lonely actually. Like those people have other people to talk to. I don't have someone. You know, <laughs> they're like, oh, you know, I can't do that. So yeah. But do you think this comes from um, comes from how other people view you? As in how other people would view you as alone? Not Does really. it come I don't from think there? So. I don't think so. I, I think myself. Now, generally, because I do like having someone to talk to. So when I don't have someone, others have someone. I'd be like, I wish I had someone. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, it does come from that. But I do have a lot of friends. Oh, I do have I'm a lot sure of friends. I don't think that's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> I do have a lot of friends. Yeah. I do like to meet new people. Yeah. A lot. Like everyone, I know some friends who would come to say from Kuwait or somewhere else, like, oh, let's meet. Okay, let's meet. So I do prepare meeting every time to just sit with them, talk with them. You know, I love doing this AB Talks thing with everyone. Like, how are you? Like, no, really, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what are you? I, I love when someone just speaks with me freely and he just opens for me, you know. And sometimes people tell me, like, I don't know how did I, I tell you this thing, but <laughs> I just came, you know, I just came. So, yeah, I do like talking with people. Yeah, that's you know? the thing about people, like, everyone has a story. Yeah, and that's really interesting, you know. For me, also, in terms of traveling, for example, like, I don't, I don't say this is the right thing, but, like, when I travel somewhere, I don't like to travel the same place. I know countries are really big and this, but I think the world is too big to just visit the same the country. The same place over and <laughs> over. I, I, I agree. like visit there. No, let me try this country. You know, let me try the, another continent. Yeah? So, and I think there's a lot of, to explore you know, in the world. There's a lot of things. And this is with people also. There's a lot to explore in the world, a lot of cultures to get to know. And it's interesting when people come to us, you know, you have this Mexican culture, which is very interesting. Different. I want to know that more. There's this African culture, like in Kenya or something like that. I want to do this. And uh, Sri Lanka, for example. So for me, that's really interesting. Yeah. That's and so history cool. comes from that. I do love history a lot. Yeah. And history shapes uh, the way that culture was formed. It, sh- mm. it, it explains a lot of how people are the way they are. And how you view things, you know. Exactly. Uh, for example, for me, I, I listened to a podcast one day and there was a, a Saudi guy who was a traveler like this. And he said, I always advise people whenever you want to go to a certain country, know their history. It would be a totally different trip. And I, I felt that because when I went to, for example, to Istanbul in Turkey, because I know, you know, the history of the Roman Empire, the Ottoman Empire, how Ottoman Empire entered, you know, and opened Constantinople and became... So I know this story. So when I went there so and I saw the place, like... It's wow. a whole nother experience. It's a whole experience. different experience. Yeah. And even the... I don't know, you appreciate what you're looking at much more when you know the exactly. history Exactly. You it. know, when you see a wall, it's a 1,000 years old. And this was there when Muhammad al-Fatih entered. Like, like wow. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> For me, especially, I would say one of the like highlights of uh, Istanbul was uh, Hagia Sophia. Oh, I love Hagia Sophia. It's, oh, so, it's insane. Like the way exactly. both the, the church and the mosque aspect exactly. is there. It's the only place in the world in that has both elements I together. I Maybe. don't know if it's in the world or if it was in Asia. Maybe. I'm not sure, but, it, but how it, it's big a major, it is. How, yeah. You know, for me also seeing a place and knowing that how much things happen here, how much stories happened here, how much people crazy, enter yeah. that place. And it's like this place just like, you know, this thing. It's, it's yeah, amazing. it's like when you're standing there, you're like... Uh, you would think, oh my God, how many people would have stood in this exact place Exactly. Here? Like, it's crazy. It's very crazy. Yeah. So I loved it. I loved Istanbul a lot, actually. Yeah. I want to continue this conversation further. And I think yeah, we yeah. will after the recording, yeah. but because <laughs> the time is up. But That's thank okay. you so much. You're welcome. This was awesome. You're welcome. It's it was amazing. so 
interesting hearing your perspective on things and we should do like a What? last little sip of sip i for finished it oh you finished it <laughs> i drink a last car i can't <laughs> well, you're the first person who finished it before we ended like well, people always drink it afterwards you're the first person no i like to drink it hard. like look at I me i do have a sip That's one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. But it's nice, Karak. 